So a while ago, I uploaded a video covering the dinosaur movie Iceberg Chart. Overall, I was really happy with that video. But it was quickly brought to my attention that a lot was missing from that chart, and as I said at the end of that video, I wasn't against making a follow-up to it that had all of the dinosaur movies that weren't initially included. So this is the second version of the dinosaur movie Iceberg made by me. We're going to be exploring a wide variety of dinosaur movies, with some of them being downright weird. If you want to hear my reaction to some of these weird dinosaur movies, you can always check out my Patreon as I have an exclusive series where I commentate over dinosaur movies that you can listen to for $3 a month. With all that said, let's get started. Transformers Age of Extinction Already starting off with a loose title to call a dinosaur movie, but this was one that a lot of you said was missing in the last iceberg, so I decided to add it for this one. Age of Extinction is actually the fourth installment to the live-action Michael Bay Transformer movies that not only feature robot dinosaurs and a pterosaur, including a robot tyrannosaur named Grimlock, a triceratops named Slug, a Spinosaurus named Scorn, and a pteranodon named Strafe. But the movie also has a whole beginning sequence that takes place 65 million years ago, right before the extinction of the dinosaurs. In this beginning segment, a race of aliens invade a prehistoric Earth to cover it in a metallic substance from a device called Seeds. That ends up killing a bunch of dinosaurs and causing their extinction. Later on in the final battle sequence of the movie, we finally get to see the robot dinosaurs as they team up with the Autobots to fight against the Decepticons in Hong Kong. I guess the plot is revolved around the Autobots preventing one of the seeds from being used again, as the metallic substance within it, which is called Transformium and is what the Transformers are made out of, is wanted for its potential in advancing human technology and defense forces, among other dangerous things. 65 65 is a newer dinosaur film that features a pair of human-looking aliens that crash land on a prehistoric Earth after they're hit by some asteroids. Of course, the part of their ship that has the escape pod that they need in order to get home is on top of a mountain far away from their current location. So they're forced to trek through the Cretaceous woods where they have to avoid raptors, quadrupedal lizard things, pterosaurs, tyrannosauruses, and other carnivorous animals. But along with that, a meteor is also heading straight towards Earth, the same one that wiped out the dinosaurs. So they have to get to the ship without being eaten and without being a part of the KT extinction event. Fantasia Fantasia isn't really a linear movie, but rather it's a compilation of instrumental shorts that are accompanied by different animated segments with an array of colorful imagery that complement the music and also vary in storytelling. Some parts are more abstract and are meant to simply give shapes and color to some of the music, and other parts have longer, more extended stories like the Rite of Spring segment of the movie, which is a 20 or so minute segment that showcases what life was like millions of years ago, including animation of Earth's earliest years before life, before transitioning through the years of microscopic life, which then leads to the evolution of more advanced creatures like fish and amphibians that eventually make their way onto land. On land are the dinosaurs as they were thought to be during that point in time. Animals that hunted, fed, cared for their young, and so on. The shore ends with the dinosaurs inevitable extinction before moving on to the next segment. Apparently the movie started out in the late 1930s as just one animated segment, that being The Sorcerer's Apprentice, which also features in Fantasia and showcases Mickey Mouse abusing and losing control of the the powers of his sorcerer master. When the cost to make this animated piece was starting to get pricey, it was decided that it would be used to make a feature-length project out of it that included more animation and music so that they could make their money back on it. One piece of music that was created was called Rite of Spring by Igor Stravinsky, who always wanted to use this musical piece to, as described in the movie, express primitive life. And it was initially made as a ballet that was meant to be performed as tribal dances. But when it was shown to Walt Disney and his animators, they had a different idea for the piece. Apparently, they wanted to get an accurate idea of what life was like back then, so consulted with scientific figures including Roy Chapman Andrews and Barnum Brown, and they would get Bill Roberts and Paul Satterfield to direct the segment. What resulted was an eight-part series put together to tell a 20-something minute story about pre 
prehistoric life depicted in a way that was never seen before, through colorful and fluid 2D animation. Adventures in Dinotopia Adventure in Dinotopia is about a pair of brothers that get stranded on the titular island after an airplane excursion with their father goes south. They explore the island and discover a new world where not only do dinosaurs and humans coexist, but also where some of the dinosaurs have even reached human levels of intelligence. Despite how interesting this world is, the brothers don't wish to stay and want to find their dad and get off the island. However, when the brothers learn they aren't able to leave Dinotopia due to the harsh natural environments that surround the island, they get used to their new life here, meeting new people and dinosaurs, exploring new areas on the island, and trying to find their father. All while trying to avoid the jaws of deadlier creatures like Tyrannosaurus Rex. The movie is based off a kids book series by the same name that was written and illustrated by artist and author James Gurney. I actually have a video that explains the history, lore, and origins of the first Dinotopia book, so if any of this seems interesting to you and you want to know a little bit more about it, check that out. As far as the movie itself goes, it doesn't necessarily follow the story of the book, but rather it uses elements of it to create its own story in the same setting. The movie actually started off as a miniseries produced by Hallmark that originally aired on ABC in May of 2002 as three separate episodes. When it came down to home release, however, the episodes were combined together as a single two-hour film in some DVD releases. The Lost World 2001's The Lost World is a made-for-TV movie adaptation of the original 1912 story by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle that initially aired in two parts on BBC One, but was released as a single film upon home release. The movie focuses on our four main characters, Professor Challenger, Edward Malone, John Roxton, and Professor Summerlee, all traveling to a seemingly mythical plateau for their own reasons. Upon reaching the top, they discover a world of dinosaurs, cannibal, ballistic ape men and a native tribe that's at war with them. The movie has a healthy mix of being faithful to the original source material, taking place in the same time period, and including many classic scenes like the group making it across the gorge on a log, the group getting attacked by a flock of pterosaurs, the allosaurus attacking the camp at night, and using the source material to tell the story in its own way. Another notable thing about this film is that it was produced by Tim Haynes, the same man behind the Walking With franchise, and along with him, the same company that produced the CGI models for the dinosaurs in that documentary series would also work on this movie, reusing some of their models from the documentary and slightly altering them for the Lost World. Along with the CGI models, physical models were also made by a company called Crawley Creatures and Associates, who've done physical prop work for all sorts of dinosaur-related productions like the Walking With franchise, Primeval, Prehistoric Park, T-Rex Autopsy, and Prehistoric Planet. Planet. You Are Umasu You Are Umasu is a dinosaur anime film that's focused on a T-Rex named Hart that's raised amongst a herd of hadrosaurs. When the rest of the herd refuses to accept the T-Rex young out of fear that it will harm them one day, the mother Myasaur leaves the herd with her offspring. When Hart eventually grows up, he realizes his predatory instincts and runs away to avoid harming his family. During his time alone, he comes across an ankylosaur hatchling that he calls umasu, which means tasty or delicious in Japanese. But the ankylosaur imprints on Hart thinking the T-Rex is his father and that umasu is his name. Throughout the film, Hart warms up to Umasu while trying to work out the conflicting idea of giving in to his carnivorous tendencies to sustain himself or reverting back to his old ways when he was living with his hadrosaur family. The movie is actually based on a 2003 children's book called You Look Yummy that was written by Tatsuya Miyonishi. This book would actually spawn a series called the Tyrannosaurus series that currently has 12 titles and have apparently spawned other movie adaptations. The Giant Behemoth After a fisherman dies from burns on a beach near a coastal town by England, a pair of scientists investigate the area, suspecting the man's death to be linked to the concerning cases of marine life being exposed to radiation from nuclear bomb testings. What they end up discovering is a lot bigger than radiation-exposed fish, because what lurks under the sea is concluded to be a very large semi-aquatic fictional dinosaur called Paleosaurus. Similar to an eel, the Paleosaurus has the ability to discharge 
charge electricity from its body, which causes the burns that are found on many of the victims that encounter it. After the creature makes itself known to the public, the military attempts to intervene and destroy the monster. This was the second dinosaur monster flick that Eugene Laurier directed, with the first one being The Beast from 20,000 Fathoms. Given the success of Beast, people seemed very impressed with Laurier's ability to make a monster movie, because he was approached by many with more concepts of sci-fi monster movies, though the director wasn't impressed by any of them. That was until he was approached by a producer working for a British production company called Artistas Alliance Limited that came to him with an idea that sounded interesting. Rather than a specific animal or physical creature, the monster of this early version of the film would instead be a growing mass of radiation. Despite the intriguing idea, the British company that was co-producing the movie wasn't for the idea. They figured, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, and wanted something that was basically the same as The Beast from 20,000 Fathoms, since that film had been so successful. So eventually, the main monster for Behemoth was turned into a dinosaur, brought to life using puppets and stop-motion models, with the stop-motion animation being done by Willis O'Brien, among other names like Jack Rabin, Irving Black, Louis DeWitt, and Pete Peterson. The Ghost of Slumber Mountain The Ghost of Slumber Mountain is a 1918 stop-motion short made with animation done by Willis O'Brien. The story of the short is about a pair of kids who ask their uncle to tell them a story. The film transitions to a pair of men and their dog traveling to Slumber Mountain on a camping trip. During their trip, they find an abandoned cabin that belonged to a man named Mad Dick. Inside the cabin, one of the men find a telescope and looks through it, which transports him to a prehistoric time with terror birds and dinosaurs. It turns out, the whole thing ended up being a dream. What's interesting about this film is that it was the first to really take dinosaurs and use them in a serious tone through means of film. Before this, O'Brien had several other single reel shorts about dinosaurs under his belt, but they were mainly slapstick comedies. In The Ghost of Slumber Mountain, the dinosaurs are portrayed as more animalistic and wild rather than being used for comedic purposes. Apparently, $3,000 was invested into this movie and it would make back its money by a wide margin, racking up around $100,000. And its significance would lead to other films like The Lost World and King Kong. Land of the Lost 2009's Land of the Lost is a comedy movie that's a very loose adaptation to the original 1974 TV show that went by the same name. In the movie, a scientist named Dr. Rick Marshall gets sucked through a time warp with two of his colleagues, and they wake up in a primordial world inhabited by dinosaurs, ape men, and a humanoid reptilian group called the Sleestock. There are some elements of the original, but overall the movie takes a big departure from the 1974 TV show, which was more of a family-friendly adventure series revolved around a father and his two kids that get sucked into a world with stop-motion dinosaurs. This version has more crude humor, and CGI dinosaurs. Overall, a lot of people didn't seem to like this movie very much, partly because of the tonal shift it takes from the source material, but also because the movie in itself wasn't very good. Even the producers of the original show, TV and movie producers Sid and Marty Croft, would later come out and express their regrets for the movie's creation, and also admitted that they weren't very involved in its development. However, according to a 2015 comic book article, Marty Croft said this, this. So now, Land of the Lost is coming back, and we're not going to do a deal with the studio. We're going to fund the picture ourselves, spend the budget, find investors, and do the picture. But we're going to do it right. We're not going to do another one where we knew mistakes were made. We won't make the same mistakes again. There's been some updates here and there about the developments for a new Land of the Lost project, but so far nothing has materialized yet. Super Mario Brothers Super Mario Bros. is a very loose 1993 movie adaptation of the popular Nintendo game franchise of the same name. It's revolved around the brotherly plumber duo Mario and Luigi, who are broke as they struggle to find work in Brooklyn. Meanwhile, paleontology student Daisy is struggling to keep her dig site from being interfered by a construction company ran by rich businessman Anthony Scapelli, who wants to build where she is digging. 
When some of Scapelli's men cause plumbing damage to the underground site that threatens the preservation of Daisy's fossil discoveries, she gets the Mario brothers to help her stop it. However, she's kidnapped in the process and is taken through an underground portal that leads to a parallel dimension where dinosaurs never went extinct and instead evolved into reptilian humanoid creatures that live in the dystopian city of Dino Hatton. The city is ran by a man, or I guess in this case a Saurian, named Koopa, who wants Daisy because she has a valuable rock that has the potential to merge the dinosaur's world with the human world. Most of the so-called dinosaurs or reptilians just look like humans though. That said, there are a few scenes where animatronics and puppet works are used for some of the creature effects. In some scenes, we see full body models of compy-like dinosaurs, some head props of the Goomba characters, and of course, a full-size animatronic of Yoshi, which is the only real dinosaur we really get to see and the most elaborate prop used in the movie. Actually, according to the Starlog's Dinosaur Movie History magazine, Yoshi had four different models made of him, but the main one, the full-body animatronic, took special effects designer Mark Mater six months to make. This is one of the movies that I ended up watching fully for this video, and it's interesting to say the least. It's definitely one that I want to do a full breakdown of one of these days, because just reading about some of the developments make this movie sound just as, if not more crazy than the movie itself. Apparently, the movie went through development hell, with constant changes being made, problems with the directors, unhappy actors, and so on. Today, it's not remembered well by a lot of the original cast, at least from what I've seen. And to make matters even worse, it was a box office failure, only bringing in about $39 million when it took about $48 million to make. This small synopsis of the development doesn't do justice for the entirety of the events, so maybe one of these days I'll do a longer video that explores the whole story. Along the Moonbeam Trail this 1920 short film is about a man and his two nephews camping out in the woods when one evening, a magical fairy appears and grants them a wish. The kids wish for a magical airplane to take them to the moon, but on their way, they get attacked by a space pterodactyl and crash land on a distant planet, where they encounter stop-motion dinosaurs. They encounter dinosaurs like Stegosaurus, Trachodon, and Tyrannosaurus Rex. The film is pretty weird, as it's more of a fairy tale kind of story rather than a dinosaur one. During their space trip, they encounter all sorts of people like the God of War, who's some sort of intergalactic traffic cop, a witch-like Mother Goose who's riding on a broomstick, and the seven daughters of Atlas dancing in the middle of space. But the film is also an interesting case. There was a time where it had been lost completely, but according to some versions of it that have been put around the internet, half of the film had been discovered in the attic of the Chatham Community Players Theater in New Jersey. Once the film had been discovered, it apparently launched a search party for the rest of it. This eventually led to more of the film being discovered from a man named Jack Sullivan, who also lived in New Jersey and whose father also kept some of the film after everything was being cleared for renovations at that same theater. And even more of the film was eventually found with the British Film Institute. Together, all of the found footage was restored and put together, though some of the film is still missing. Most notably, Notably, the ending, one of the boys wishes they were back home, and they wake up in their beds safe and sound. Speckles the Tarbosaurus Speckles the Tarbosaurus is a South Korean coming-of-age story that takes place in the late Cretaceous period and is about a young Tarbosaurus named Speckles, whose family is taken from him at the hands, or I guess claws, of an older Tyrannosaur named One-Eye. So we follow Speckles as he grows up alone in the Cretaceous wilderness, encounter other dinosaurs, meeting new friends, and eventually coming face to face with One-Eye after the old Tyrannosaur poses as a threat to him once again. The movie was the outcome of the popularity of the computer effects that were initially used in a documentary called Koreanosaurus, also known as Tarbosaurus, The Mightiest Ever, that aired in 2008. Due to the positive reception, it was decided to turn the documentary into a feature film in the hopes of reaching a wider demographic. Of course, that movie would be Speckles the Tarbosaurus, also known as Dino King. Gertie the Dinosaur Gertie the Dinosaur is the first animated movie to not just include a dinosaur, but include one as the central character of the story. And it was made all the way back in 1914 by cartoonist Winstor McKay. 
The movie features McKay himself making a bet with one of his colleagues, George McManus, that he can bring a dinosaur to life with just cartoon drawings. McManus agrees to the bet, and after six months of hand drawing out everything, McKay presents a show to his colleagues introducing them to Gertie the Dinosaur, an animated brontosaurus. Throughout the showing, McKay commands Gertie to perform tricks and follow the orders that he gives out. A few comedic antics occur, but ultimately, McKay won his bet against McManus. Manus. From the sources that I've read, it took McKay a bit longer than six months to get this short finished. It was more like an almost two-year project with the use of the method called keyframe animation. But the end product was amazing for the time. That said, the origins of Gertie is sometimes said to come about from skeptics in the audience questioning the validity of McKay's animations. In the book Before Mickey, the animated film by Donald Crafton, it's mentioned that there were some claims of people thinking that he was using wires to move around the animated characters on screen. Other sites, like TV Tropes, claim that people also accused McKay of tracing his drawings with that of actual people in live-action footage to achieve his animations. In order to put these accusations to rest, McKay felt like the only way to prove his legitimacy as an animator was to create something that would be impossible to move with wires and to trace because they no longer exist. He would create and animate a dinosaur, and that dinosaur would eventually become Gertie. The Dinosaur and the Missing Link, a Prehistoric Tragedy before Willis O'Brien focused on his more ambitious movie projects that he would become well known for, the stop motion animator would make several caveman dinosaur slapstick comedy films for a film production company called Edison Studio, with his first one being the silent short The Dinosaur and the Missing Link. The story is focused on a trio of cavemen, Duke, Stonejaw Steve, and Theophilus Ivoryhead, fighting over cavewoman Araminta Rockface. As they do this, a mischievous primate named Wild Willy gets into their food, causing the three cavemen to go off to hunt for their dinner, where more antics ensue. Willy then decides to go find more food and mistakes a brontosaur tail for a snake, leading to a fight with the dinosaur that ends up killing Willy. Theophilus witnesses the fight go down, and when everyone else shows up, the short ends with him taking the credit for killing the primate, winning Araminta's heart. Jurassic Domination Jurassic Domination is an asylum-produced creature feature flick that was meant to capitalize off of Jurassic World Dominion. In the movie, theropod dinosaurs including Allosauruses and Tyrannosauruses had been created on a military base for the purpose of weaponizing them. But when a couple of them get loose, a special ops team is put together to get them back. Of course, things don't go as planned because the dinosaurs are very smart and hard to kill, as per usual in these modern dinosaur movies. Back then, they used to be dumb lumbering lizards that were killing machines. But nowadays, dinosaurs are hyper-intelligent lizards that are also killing machines. Honestly, despite being an asylum film, this was one of their better looking dinosaur movies. For a low budget movie, the dinosaur animation isn't the worst I've seen from them, and the film overall wasn't shot too terribly. Of course, this is still an asylum film, so it's definitely got its bad moments in it. And hey, they even got Eric Roberts to feature in the movie as well. The same Eric Roberts that we saw on this channel in 2001's Raptor and 2015's Cowboys vs. Dinosaurs. Dinotasia not so much a movie in the conventional sense, but more so a compilation of scenes focusing on different dinosaurs and areas of the Mesozoic that's put together in this weird combination of a movie and documentary. There are some narrated parts here and there, but it's kept pretty minimal as the movie seems to be more focused with showing the stories rather than telling them. The film's origins can actually be traced back to a dinosaur documentary series called Dinosaur Revolution from 2011. According to a Smithsonian Magazine article by Riley Black, the show was initially planned to be a silent and dramatic epic with a supplementary documentary that would focus on the science behind the show released next to it. Of course, as the show's production continued, more and more changes were made to this original plan that would eventually turn it into a more conventional dinosaur documentary. But this idea of creating a silent epic was not completely abandoned, as the concept was taken and turned into a film that that would become known as Dinotasia, and apparently it even had a theatrical release to some extent. T 
T-Rex Back to the Cretaceous. T-Rex Back to the Cretaceous is a part educational, part fictional film centered around a 16-year-old girl who's the daughter of a famous paleontologist. Her job is to give tours at the museum he curates while he goes off on his fossil digs. But one day, her dad brings back a rare discovery of what could possibly be a T-Rex egg. When her dad goes off to his dig again, the egg suddenly magically transports her to an adventure through time, where she goes back to the Cretaceous period and sees dinosaurs in the flesh. The movie was made under the IMAX 3D format, being one of the few amongst the list of IMAX movies to have a fictional story blended with the more educational aspects of the film, as the catalog of films shot with IMAX have been primarily documentary or education based, with a few fictional movies here and there. But bringing dinosaurs onto the big screen in this format was new, and according to the movie's executive producer, Andrew Gellis, the idea of putting dinosaurs on the IMAX screen was a natural. This would be the same man who would actually conceptualize the idea of T-Rex back to the Cretaceous back in early 1997. When they got the ball rolling, they had media production company L Squared Entertainment lined up to produce the film, who in turn sought the help of a special effects company called Blue Sky VIFX to work on the dinosaurs that were to be CG'd into the film. The artists apparently studied real life animals like ostriches and elephants to see how the skins and movements worked that they could then use for their dinosaurs. Torok, Son of Stone Torok is an IP that goes all the way back to the 50s, where his first appearance was actually in comic book form in the comic anthology series called Del 4 Color that was published by Western Publishing. Over the decades that followed, Torok would make several appearances in the form of more comics, several video games, and even a book series. However, one area that was lacking for the Torok property was a proper feature length film. That was until 2008, when the animated Torok Son of Stone was finally created. The movie is about Torok, who had been gone for a long time away from his family, finally returning to them only to discover that they had all been slaughtered. He goes off into their dinosaur-infested world to find the people who did this and avenge his fallen loved ones. There had actually been a couple of attempts to get a Torok movie off the ground, specifically a live-action Torok movie. Initially, a film adaptation was announced back in 2002 by Canadian actor Adam Beach, but nothing Nothing came from that announcement. Beach actually voiced Torok in the animated movie and said in a 2008 interview that they were, once again, working on a live-action Torok film. And once again, nothing came from that announcement either. Dinosaur Island after finding a strange stone on one of the bookshelves of his grandmother's house, a 13-year-old boy is transported by the stone to an island that contains prehistoric life on it. He also meets a young girl who claims to be from the 1950s and has been there for quite some time, as she's more familiar with the inhabitants and managed to make a home on the dinosaur-infested island. The two go off to learn about the stone's origins and finding their way back home while also avoiding being eaten by dinosaurs. The movie was a British-Australian co-production with Australian director, visual effects director, and writer Matt Drummond at the helm, who would actually go on to direct another dinosaur movie that I covered in the last Dinosaur Movie Iceberg called My Pet Dinosaur. Though the dinosaurs in Dinosaur Island looked more like the real thing, but even then there were some liberties taken in what the dinosaurs looked like. One unique thing about the 2014 movie is that it's one of the few science fiction adventure flicks that depicts T-Rex with feathers. Of course, this isn't completely accurate to real life because even though there have been dinosaurs in the T-Rex family discovered to have plumage, the T-Rex itself is believed to have been primarily scaly, at least in adulthood. T-Rex young likely had feathers but would lose them as they got older. According to an article by Inquisitor, the social media team for Dinosaur Island was reached out back around September of 2014, and asked about their thought process behind their decision to make their T-Rex fluffy. According to their response, our T-Rex is more about character. No, our dinosaurs don't talk. Having worked with Jack Horner, Luis Chiappe, and a range of paleontologists on all sorts of documentaries and exhibits, one thing is irrefutable. None agrees with the other. It's an ever-evolving science, and new discoveries trump old theories almost weekly. Hopefully, what we have created sparks imagination and provides entertainment. Anonymous Rex 
Anonymous Rex is a very weird dinosaur movie that takes place in an alternate world where some of the dinosaurs managed to survive the KT extinction and have continued to evolve alongside humans and becoming just as intelligent. The dinosaurs now live amongst the humans but disguise themselves to look just like them using holographic technology. The story of the movie is centered around a pair of private investigators, one of which is a velociraptor and the other is a triceratops. When a man turns up dead, the two investigate it, eventually finding out the man and his demise are linked to a cult of dinosaurs that are sick and tired of being in hiding and want to reclaim their world from the humans by unleashing feral dinosaurs onto them. If this sounds like a weird movie to you, wait till you hear where it came from. The movie is actually based on a book trilogy by author Eric Garcia, with the first book being titled Anonymous Rex, the second book titled Casual Rex, and the third and final book titled Hot and Sweaty Rex. Pretty heavy on the innuendos there, but that's the point, as they're supposed to be comedic mystery books. Eventually, the books were going to be turned into a sci-fi channel TV series, but only ever got as far as a TV movie that was actually supposed to serve as a backdoor pilot. However, due to negative responses from viewers, the plans to turn it into a full-on TV show were ditched, leaving behind just a weird movie about anthropomorphic dinosaurs. Dino Croc and Super Gator Dino Croc and Super Gator are Roger Corman produced movies. The reason why I decided to put them together as one entry is because the two films have a history that's easier to explain together rather than trying to explain them separately. In Dino Croc, the DNA of a crocodile-like dinosaur is mixed with modern crocodiles and is genetically engineered back to life, with one of the specimens escaping and terrorizing the local populace. The movie was made back in 2004 and was released on the Sci-Fi Channel. While it's difficult to say how well a movie like this did, it was successful enough for Corman to want to do a sequel for it, however, according to a Dread Central article, the Sci-Fi Channel denied a sequel to the movie as they said sequels didn't perform as well. So, in typical Corman fashion, he found a way to bypass those restrictions by essentially tricking the Sci-Fi Channel to greenlight his Dino Croc sequel. He did this by making it under the title of Super Gator and slightly changing certain elements of the main dinosaur antagonist to make it different enough to pass it off as its own standalone movie. In 2007, Super Gator would be released and it has a similar plot to Dino Croc. Genetically engineered monster attacks a bunch of local citizens, only this time, the monster was created using the DNA of a prehistoric crocodile rather than a dinosaur. And things were still not over for the two monsters, because eventually the two were given their very own crossover film, Dino Croc vs. Super Gator in 2010. Researchers at a lab were studying the two monsters, this time in Hawaii, when they suddenly escape and terrorize the locals once again. Eventually, the monsters turn on each other in a totally epic battle that no one asked for. One notable thing about this third and from what I can see final film in the Dino Croc Super Gator franchise is that Jim Wynorski ended up directing it. The same Jim Wynorski that would direct two other Roger Corman produced dinosaur flicks, Dinosaur Island from 1994 and Raptor from 2001. The Lost World not to be confused with The Lost World that was mentioned earlier in this video, 1998's The Lost World is yet another dinosaur movie adaptation of the original 1912 book, though this one strays even farther from the source material. You have the four main characters here, Challenger, Summerlee, Roxton, and Malone. In this one, Challenger and Maple White are friends, but White gets fatally injured during an expedition to a formerly uncharted plateau in Mongolia and tells Challenger about it before he passes. Challenger then gets a group of people, the main characters I mentioned earlier, to go with him to explore this plateau, along with Amanda White, Maple White's daughter. They get up the plateau with a hydrogen balloon instead of a tree log over a gorge, but crash land on top after a violent pterosaur encounter. Now trapped on the plateau, our group of characters have to survive the elements, including hostile ape men natives, and of course, the dinosaurs. But there are plenty of other differences than that. John Roxton is now 
now an antagonist of the movie, mistreating the rest of the characters and eventually turning on them altogether before his eventual death by falling off the plateau. Summerlee also dies on the plateau by being eaten by the T-Rex, which had weirdly long arms and three claws. Interesting choice. Malone is able to kill the T-Rex in the film's climax, which causes him to stay behind as Challenger and Amanda are able to get off the plateau. Overall, this is one of the weirder adaptations to the classic novel. The Legend of Dinosaurs and Monster Birds when the discovery of eggs within a cavern near Mount Fuji catches the attention of a geologist, the scientist makes his way over there and theorizes the possible existence of dinosaurs. Contrary to what the title suggests, there are actually no dinosaurs in this movie. Instead, it's discovered that a plesiosaur is lurking through the waters of Psycho Lake, and a large pterosaur is patrolling the skies above the region, with both monsters terrorizing the locals before eventually battling each other. The movie was produced by the Toei company that was initially conceptualized in 1974. The mid to late 70s were a huge time for monster movies, popularized by the releases of Steven Spielberg's Jaws and Dino De Laurenti's King Kong. It's movies like these that would lead to the inspiration of many other monster movies released around that time, including The Legend of Dinosaurs and Monster Birds. Another possible source of inspiration could have come from the planned Toho Studios and Hammer Films collaborative film Nessie which would have featured a monstrous elasmosaur-like creature terrorizing seagoers after being exposed to toxic chemicals that increased its size and strength. This film never happened, but The Legend of Dinosaurs and Monster Birds did, and despite the hype, the movie didn't have very much success in Japan and didn't do well critically either. Although it did have some moderate success in other countries, and at the very least has a bit of a cult following now. Dinosaur Adventure Dinosaur Adventure is one of the weirdest and quite possibly the worst animated dinosaur movies I have ever seen. Set during prehistoric times, we follow a young dinosaur named Tio and his group of weird friends, including a creepy pterodactyl named Cree, a not very bright ankylosaur thing named Peek, and the elderly wise dinosaur named Oro, who's responsible for the Yi meme that's now very popular among my fanbase. Basically, a volcano erupts and destroys everything, causing Tio and his friends to be separated from the rest of the dinosaur herd, including Tio's parents. So now the group have to find their way back to the herd and do so without dying. The movie was created by a German animation studio called Dingo Pictures, who are known for making really bad mockbuster films of a similar nature. Basically, they'll take ideas or elements from other movies and make really bad versions of them. Some of the sources I found in the past claim Dinosaur Adventure was ripping off movies like The Land Before Time and Disney's Dinosaur. I mean, both of these movies feature dinosaurs going through a cataclysmic event that that caused them to travel through a desolate or empty region to get to a more suitable home. Dinosaur Adventure is literally just that. Then there's the fact that Kree looks almost identical to Petrie, so much so that some people seem to think the design was traced. Regardless of how true any of this is, one thing is for certain. <laughs> the people that time forgot. The People That Time Forgot is actually a sequel to 1974's The Land That Time Forgot, which if you don't remember, in that one, a group of British survivors hijack a German U-boat that torpedoed their ship and are forced to take it to the fictional landmass of Caprona. By the end of that movie, there were only two survivors left, Bowen Tyler and Lisa Clayton. In the second movie, The People That Time Forgot, we follow Major Ben McBride as he attempts to search for his friend Tyler, eventually tracing him to Caprona. Our new cast of characters sail to the region, then take a plane over the large walls of ice that surround the landmass, before encountering a pterosaur that causes them to crash land on the dinosaur-infested island. Here, they encounter stegosauruses, ceratosauruses, and eventually, a couple of different tribes of people, including the peaceful Galu tribe who are terrorized by the deadly Naga tribe, who eventually capture our characters and threaten their lives. The Land That Time Forgot is based on a book by the same name written by author Edgar Rice Burroughs. The book is actually a part of a trilogy that the author wrote called the Caspak Trilogy, of which the second book, The People That Time Forgot, is what this movie is based on. Dinosaur World 
Dinosaur World is about a group of people who are selected to try out a new virtual reality game that immerses them into a video game world inhabited by dinosaurs that they have to survive in a Hunger Games sort of style. Really, this idea is just reused from 2018's Jurassic Games, which I talked about in the previous Iceberg Chart video. In that one, it's a group of prisoners on death row that are sentenced to a deadly game show where if they die in the game, they die in real life. If I remember correctly, Dinosaur World actually reuses clips from Jurassic games into their own movie. Not really sure how they got away with that, maybe I'm missing something here. The other notable thing about this movie is that influencer and content creator Stephen Hu is in it. You know, the emotional damage guy. Emotional damage. Pterodactyl. Not so much a dinosaur movie, but I wanted to include this one on the list because it's one that I actually kind of liked. Pterodactyl is about a paleontology teacher named Michael who takes his partner and a group of students on a fossil research trip near the Turkish-Armenian border. Meanwhile, a group of US military troops led by Captain Bergen, played by none other than fucking American rapper Coolio of all people, are hunting down an Armenian terrorist named Yolin. Eventually, Michael's group is attacked by living, breathing, and very violent pterodactyls before being saved by Bergen's troops. Now the two groups are forced to band together to fight off and survive the seemingly endless flock of pterodactyls that seem to be coming from a recently active volcano. This was one of the earliest gory movies I remember watching. There are several people getting torn in half and decapitated with blood squirting everywhere and meaty bits flying all over. Looking back on this movie now as an adult, yeah, the effects look really cheesy and dumb, but as a child, I felt like I was watching a snuff film. Regardless, I ended up really liking this movie, as it was also one of the earliest ones in my memory that introduced me to the world of creature features. Raptor Ranch so I'm going to be completely honest here, I included this movie under its alternate name Raptor Ranch, completely forgetting that I already covered this movie in my previous dinosaur movie Iceberg, but that one was under its other alternate title, The Dinosaur Experiment. So yeah, I'm not going to spend any time re-explaining what Raptor Ranch slash The Dinosaur Experiment is. If you want to know, just go watch the previous Iceberg video or something, I don't know. Hatched. Hatched is revolved around a family who go off to visit one of their relatives, a mad scientist who managed to bring dinosaurs back to life. The dinosaurs eventually get loose, kill the scientist, and threatens the lives of the rest of the family. Upon first glance, the dinosaurs don't look awful, but in movement, their models are very stiff and poorly animated. But that's to be expected since this film was produced by Proportion Productions, who has a whole list of other creature feature movies that are definitely questionable in quality. I Am T-Rex I Am T-Rex is about a young T-Rex named Jarrett, whose father, the King of Green Valley, is killed by an outside rival named Fang, who wants to take his place as king. The now orphan Jarrett then meets an older Carnotaurus that trains him to be stronger and more capable in fighting Fang to avenge his father and inherit his place as the rightful King of Green Valley. So yeah, we have Dinosaur Lion King, that's basically what it sounds like. Which if I'm correct, that's what people were already saying about Speckles the Tarbosaurus. So Basically, this is just a downgraded speckles, I guess. I don't fucking know. Journey to the Center of the Earth in 2008, a movie adaptation of Journey to the Center of the Earth was made, produced by New Line Cinema and starring Brendan Fraser. That's not what we're talking about here, though. I talked about that one in my last Iceberg video. No, the one we're talking about right now is the Asylum-produced creature feature film that was made in the same year to capitalize off of the hype of the theatrical film. In the Asylum film, a special forces team is sent on a mission to test out a teleportation device. But things go wrong, and the machine accidentally teleports them to the center of the earth where they have to fend off dinosaurs and giant spiders. The movie is very loosely based off the Jules Verne novel with the same name, as there were clearly no intentions on making any sort of faithful adaptation to the source material. I mean, aside from the things the movie is trying to capitalize off of, there's nothing else too interesting about it. Dinosaur Babes 
Dinosaur Babes is a Brett Piper directed cavewoman movie that's about a trio of cavemen that are trying to feed their starving village in a prehistoric dinosaur infested world. When they make their way back to their village, they discover all of their women had been taken by an all woman rival tribe that uses them as a sacrifice to a scar faced Tyrannosaurus. Which, I have to be honest, is undoubtedly one of the coolest T-Rex designs I've seen in a film. But of course, the dinosaurs aren't the only stars of the movie, as there are also naked cavewomen. The cavewoman subgenre of science fiction has proved time and time again that both dinosaurs and sex sell pretty well. And when Brett Piper came up with the idea for a cavewoman movie based on the fact that he had a whole bunch of dinosaur props laying around his house, he began looking for studios that were interested in his idea, eventually finding Take Two Productions. But according to Piper, the production company had him make the footage they wanted, took all of it from him, and used it to make their own movie out of it. Much to Piper's dismay who seemed to have his own vision for the movie that was ultimately ignored. What results is a pretty weird movie about caveman, dinosaurs, and I kid you not, even aliens. Brute Force Brute Force is a 1914 silent short film made by D.W. Griffith and it's about two caveman tribes at war with each other. One of the tribes, only made up of men, attacked the other tribe for their women, only to find that all of the men in that tribe had gone off to fight an animatronic theropod dinosaur, said to be a ceratosaurus by many around the internet, along with the fact that this is the earliest film to feature live-action dinosaurs. Anyways, the cavemen go on a rescue mission for their women and fight off the kidnappers. Prehistoric Peeps Prehistoric Peeps is the earliest known film to feature dinosaurs. The four minute short was made back in August of 1905 and it features a modern man and caveman getting chased by the first on-screen depictions of dinosaurs which were brought to life using pantomime costumes. The film isn't widely available to the public leading to many considering it to be lost media. However, according to a YouTuber, Past Uncut, who's got a series of videos talking about the history of dinosaur films, a couple of film of prehistoric peeps are actually archived in the British Film Institute, and they even went as far as making a digital version of the movie that's only available to watch in person at the BFI Rubin Library in the BFI South Bank Cinema in London. Past Uncut actually had the chance to go watch the movie and made an entire video on its short but crazy story. I highly recommend checking this video out in the link in the description down below if you want to know more about the world's first dinosaur movie. Claw. Claw is a dinosaur horror film about a pair of friends that are on a road trip to Los Angeles before they get a flat tire in the desert, forcing them to camp out in a ghost town for the night. Unfortunately for them, they just so happen to be near the vicinity where a scientist managed to bring a velociraptor back to life which also escapes and goes after our characters. There's not too much to say about this one, but it's always interesting to see an attempt at a modern dinosaur horror movie, even if it's a low-budget generic creature feature. Ebola Rex Ebola Rex is a dinosaur horror movie about a captive T-Rex that gets injected with Ebola by a protester who was, I guess, a part of a Dino Lives Matter rally? Seems counterintuitive, but maybe I just need to watch the movie to get the full context. Regardless of context, the movie is still weird, because the now Ebola-infected T-Rex escapes and runs rampant through the streets of Los Angeles. So now a general, a renegade soldier, and some of the locals have to band together to stop it. At the Earth's Core Based on the Edgar Rice Burroughs novel by the same name, At the Earth's Core is a 1976 fantasy sci-fi movie about a pair of men, a British scientist and a US financer, testing out their newest invention, a vehicular drill called the Iron Mole, to explore the depths of the Earth. What they ended up finding is a hollow world called Pellucidar, which housed strange creatures and hostile primitive humans. From what I can find on the movie, the dinosaur content is pretty minimal, as most, if not all of the creatures are entirely fictional, with only a couple of them expressing some dinosaurian elements to them. Some of these weird creatures include a couple of bipedal horned monsters, a winged reptilian creature, a beaked falcon-like animal that stands upright, a quadrupedal lizard thing, and a fire-breathing frog-like creature. The Loch Ness Horror 
Not really a dinosaur movie, but the Crater Lake monster was included in the last Iceberg video, so I figured why not add in some more plesiosaur-based monster movies. From what I've read up on, the Loch Ness Horror isn't particularly the most interesting creature feature. It's about some scientists that discover the existence of the Loch Ness Monster after a series of attacks that leave many swimmers dead. Apparently, the monster went on this murder spree after her egg was stolen from her. There's also a subplot with a German bomb plane in the lake that the military is trying to cover up, but this apparently ties into how they eventually stop the monster. Regardless, it looks like a cheesy little creature feature kind of movie and it looks like it could be unintentionally funny. Adventure at the Center of the Earth Adventure at the Center of the Earth is a Mexican-produced sci-fi creature feature movie from 1965. After a strange animal attack in a cave in Mexico which leaves one man dead and one woman catatonic, a scientist organizes an expedition of people to travel into the cave system to find out what caused the attack. What the group finds is a subterranean world of monsters, some prehistoric and some fantastical. However, all of the dinosaurs featured in the movie are reused stock footage from previous dinosaur movies like the infamous lizard and alligator battle from 1940s 1 million BC. Rex, a dinosaur story. Rex, A Dinosaur Story is a Japanese family movie about a little girl named Chie and her paleontologist father discovering a dinosaur egg in an ancient cave. When they bring the egg home, a baby T-Rex hatches from it, which is named, you guessed it, Rex. Chie befriends the baby Rex, but things get stressful after the dinosaur becomes known in the public sphere along with its increasing size growth. Eventually, Chie runs away from home with Rex in the hopes of finding his mother and avoiding a life behind the confines of humanity. Killersaurus Killersaurus is a British dinosaur horror movie about a scientist who creates a living dinosaur as a bioweapon as a part of a contractual agreement they made with a strange organization that helped them when funds were low. Apparently, the goal for this organization was to use the data behind the creation of the dinosaur to create dinosaur-human hybrid super soldiers. Basically, from the sounds of it, this is that one unmade Jurassic Park 4 concept that was finally turned into a film. Honestly, as weird as that concept sounds, I feel like it could work as a weird pulpy science fiction movie. Jurassic Prey Jurassic Prey is a Mark Polonia directed low budget creature feature about a group of thieves hiding out in a cabin while being chased down by not just the law, but also a living breathing dinosaur that is awakened from a mining explosion. For those of you that don't know, Mark Polonia is a movie director who's known for these kinds of very low budget films and actually has a small list of dinosaur related ones under his belt, most of which I will be taking a look at later in the video. Spoiler alert, none of them are good at all. Dinosaur Island Dinosaur Island is an animated kids film about a group of teenagers that are selected to star in a survival show and are challenged to survive in the Amazon for a cash reward. Of course, they weren't expecting to crash land on a plateau that's inhabited by still living dinosaurs. Some sites around the internet say this movie was inspired by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's 1912 book The Lost World, which given the dinosaurs on a plateau concept, this is likely the case. The movie was directed by comic book artist and film producer producer Will Mugniot, who I've talked about briefly before with his involvement with the cancelled Escape from Jurassic Park TV show from the 90s. Jurassic Thunder Jurassic Thunder is a very weird dinosaur movie. After the African government is overtaken by a deadly zombie virus, a warlord takes advantage and now has control over their nuclear weapons. So the United States, allied with Russia, now have to decide how to tackle the situation, with Russian officials suggesting their own tactics, which is using weaponized dinosaurs to battle the warlord and the zombies. The movie is meant to be comical and self-aware, cracking jokes about politics and pop culture, though so how funny these jokes actually are is debatable. Jurassic School this asylum-produced movie is revolved around a young boy participating in a science competition for school. I remember these kinds of events from my days of school too. Most kids, including myself, did the Soda Mentos Volcano project, but this kid ended up making a whole-ass living dinosaur for his science project. 
fucking show off. However, things start to get difficult after his new dinosaur friend escapes and word gets out about his creation. Definitely has an E.T. vibe to it, but you know, with a dinosaur this time. Kingdom of the Dinosaurs In the not-so-far future of 2030, World War III breaks out just when a corporation figures out a way to bring dinosaurs back to life. The dinosaurs escape, and a group of people working for said company manage to hold out in a bunker during the fallout of the war. Two years later, they're forced to exit the bunker when supplies begin to dwindle. But the dinosaurs that escaped the facility are still very present in the area and now pose a threat to our characters. The idea is interesting, but the overall execution doesn't look promising, as everything that I've seen from the film make it look more like a standard dinosaur B-movie. The Mighty Gorga Alright, admittedly, this is another stretch to call a dinosaur movie. The Mighty Gorga is more of an attempt to cash in on King Kong, or at the very least, the trend of giant ape movies that King Kong caused. Gorga revolves around a circus owner who's about to go bankrupt, but when he hears rumors of a giant ape in Africa, he goes on the hunt for it so he could feature it as an attraction and save his business. When they get there, they eventually run into a Tyrannosaurus in the form of a very cheap plastic model that fights off Gorga, who doesn't look any better. The whole sequence only lasts about a couple of minutes, and it's the only actual dinosaur that shows up in the film. Well, that, and there's the dragon-looking creature that's featured later on towards the end, but that's just reused footage from what was apparently lifted from another movie called Goliath and the Dragon, though I'm not completely sure about that. Prehistoric Poultry one of Willis O'Brien's lesser-known prehistoric short films, Prehistoric Poultry is a 1917 slapstick comedy about a chicken-like dinosaur called a Dinornis getting into a bit of mischief after his caveman friend gets hit with a rock by a huntsman who threw it using a catapult. The Dinornis gets revenge for his caveman friend by launching the huntsman in his own catapult, sending him flying through the air. Aside from the Dinornis itself, which is said to be an ancestor of modern chickens, there's also a brief scene of a brontosaurus as well, which is meant as a sort of pet or maybe even livestock for the caveman. Not much to say about this film, as it's only four minutes long, but it's always interesting to see the early works of special effects, especially from someone like Willis O'Brien. El Bello Dormiente El Bello Dormiente, which translates to The Beautiful Dreamer, is a Mexican comedy film that takes place partly in the past and partly in present day. The movie is about a caveman named Tricky Tran. Okay, just so everybody knows, I can't roll my R's, so every name that's going to be said in this in this section is going to be butchered, so uh, I, I apologize in advance. Uh, but yes, it's about a caveman named, I'm just going to call him Tricky, who falls in love with a cavewoman named uh, Jade, or Jade, from a neighboring tribe. When the two are set to be married, Triki's rival, named Trakata, <laughs> who also fell in love with the same cavewoman, gives him an herb that causes him to fall asleep for several thousands of years. When Triki finally awakens in the present day by a team of archaeologists, he realizes that two people in the group, a female named Yolanda and her boyfriend Heinrich, look exactly like his cavewoman love and his rival from the prehistoric past. As far as the dinosaur content goes, however, it's minimal as the main focus is on Triki and the comedy of him falling in love and getting used to life in the present day. But it's kind of funny, there's a literal mambo sequence towards the beginning of Triki singing to Hare that features a brontosaurus and a tyrannosaurus with the latter, I kid you not, dancing to the music. Also, something to note, Triki was played by Mexican actor Herman Valdez, also known by his nickname Tintan, who was huge in Mexican film throughout the 50s and 60s, starring in all all sorts of comedy films ranging from horror comedies to musical comedies to romantic comedies and so on. Journey to the Center of the Earth 2008 seemed to have been the year for Journey to the Center of the Earth, because not only was there the theatrical release version with Brandon Fraser and the direct-to-DVD version by The Asylum, but there was also the TV movie version that was produced by RHI Entertainment and aired on Ion Television on January 27th, 2008. This version follows scientist and fighter Jonathan Brock, who's approached by Martha Dennison, whose husband, a scientist named Edward Dennison, had disappeared within an Alaskan mine attempting to find a passageway that leads to the center of the Earth. 
So Jonathan, his nephew Abel, Martha herself, and a guide make the trip to this passageway and eventually discover a world of prehistoric creatures and native people led by Edward himself. Really, the dinosaur content in this movie is very minimal, only coming down to a single animal, that being Archaeopteryx, who get shot down into a lake to feed an attacking plesiosaur as a distraction for the group to get away from it. Sound of Horror Sound of Horror is a weird take on a dinosaur movie, mainly because even though it's a dinosaur movie, there isn't really a dinosaur in it. At least, not one you can see. Sound of Horror is a Spanish horror movie about a group of people searching for treasure within a cave system by the Greek countryside. What they find instead are a couple of eggs that hatch out a dinosaurian monster of some kind with the ability to turn invisible, with one of the only indications of its presence being its terrifying shrieks. This is another movie I made its own video for and go more in depth with. If you're interested in this one at all and want to know more about it, I'll leave a link for that video in the description down below. Teenage Caveman Teenage Caveman is about an adolescent caveman who questions the superstitious induced principles that the rest of his stone tribe follows. Curiosity gets the better of the caveman, and he and a group of others from his tribe venture into the forbidden regions, only to encounter various different creatures and threats, some of them being dinosaurs. However, the only dinosaur content featured are just reused shots from movies like 1 Million BC and Unknown Island. Apparently, the movie wasn't always called Teenage Caveman. Roger Corman, who actually directed this film, gave it the simple title of Prehistoric World. But right before he would release this movie, American International Pictures, the company he was working under at the time, released I Was a Teenage Werewolf in 1957, which proved to be successful. So wanting to keep up with that success, AIP changed Corman's caveman flick, which was originally titled Prehistoric World, to Teenage Caveman. Corman wasn't too happy about the name change, but still thought the film came out fine. Ice Road Terror A sci-fi original movie, a pair of truckers are assigned to transport a scientist and equipment to an Alaskan mine. However, they soon learn the explosives the miners used for excavation ends up awakening a prehistoric lizard-like creature simply called Predator X in the movie, which then pursues the truckers and the scientist. Sure, maybe also calling this one a dinosaur movie is a stretch, but I think we've established by now that exceptions have been made for this video. Pterodactyl Speaking of exceptions, there's Pterodactyl. Not to be confused with the 2005 version I mentioned earlier, this one is a 2022 movie that's focused on a woman trying to find her sister after she went missing from a hike in the mountains with her friend. What they discover instead are a flock of hostile pterosaurs in all of their low-budget CGI glory. Pterodactyl after a meteor shower somehow resurrects a flock of terror dactyls, a band of LA residents work together to prevent their city from being overtaken by the pterosaurs. This one is more of a comedy action movie rather than trying to take itself seriously like some of these other low budget creature features, but that doesn't stop it from looking cheap. But hey, pterosaurs attacking Los Angeles? Sounds like fun to me. Jurassic Bark this is an actual movie. Jurassic Bark is about an intergalactic group of canines called Star Paws who are after the Master Bone, an ancient dinosaur bone that holds world-dominating powers. They're trying to get to it before their evil arch nemesis gets to it first, a feline named, I kid you not, Marlin Butterpaws. That's, that's the cat's name, Marlin Butterpaws. Unfortunately for the Star Paws team, Butterpaws kidnaps, or I guess dognaps, all of their best canine agents, forcing a pair of really dumb and incompetent dogs to stop the bad guys and save their friends. The movie looks about as good as it sounds. There are dinosaurs in it, I guess, but their screen time is pretty minimal and not really that great anyway. Thugs vs. Dinosaurs you know, for all of these movies, I try my best to write my own descriptions of them, but I think the IMDb synopsis for Thugs vs. Dinosaurs does a perfect job. According to the synopsis, as a dinosaur apocalypse begins in a small town, a heartbroken paleontologist and a weird Nazi descendant join forces with a slightly distressed war veteran to find his daughter. This independent masterpiece of a movie was directed by Trip Tiffany and was created on virtually no budget. In summer of 2017, the movie was officially released on his YouTube channel 
channel called Astroidio, and you can watch it there for free. Saurians Saurians is a really bad dinosaur movie directed by infamous low-budget filmmaker Mark Polonia. I actually did a whole video on this movie, so I won't talk about it for too long, but to summarize, the movie is about a group of college students studying fossils in the woods near a construction site whose workers use dynamite during their job that awakens a pair of dinosaurs, a Tyrannosaurus rex, and a Stegosaurus that were once dormant within a mountain. Apparently, the two dinosaurs had been preserved in what one of the students described as rock gas for all of those millions of years, being put in a hibernation state before the explosions eventually woke them up again. Now that the two dinosaurs are free, it's up to the college students to stop them from their deadly rampage. All the while, a big game hunter is hired to capture the dinosaurs as well. Polonia is known for making really low budget films, to the point where sometimes he refers to them as micro budget instead of low budget. And while I have no idea what the budget was for Saurians, I can imagine it was close to non-existent. Pterodactyl Woman from Beverly Hills. So in case you couldn't tell, we're in the final tier, so things are going to get really weird. Pterodactyl Woman from Beverly Hills is about a woman named Pixie, whose paleontologist husband digs around a sacred burial ground, which angers a native medicine man who performs a chant and summons a curse on his wife, literally turning her into a pterodactyl. She begins to exhibit strange behaviors before undergoing her complete transformation, and it looks about as good as you'd expect it to for a weird low-budget movie like this. Galaxy of the Dinosaurs this is one of the goofiest dinosaur movies I've ever seen. Galaxy of the Dinosaurs is a low-budget film about a group of space travelers led by Captain Chronic, who all became stranded on planet Gurgon on their way to Earth. They soon learn the planet is roamed by dinosaurs that pick off the survivors one by one. Meanwhile, the group is also being stalked by Chronic's arch-nemesis, Gertorius Gonimus. That's, that's the name. That Gertorius Gonimus is the name of his arch-nemesis. It's revealed that Gonimus had planned all of this out, selecting numerous species of animals from other planets and putting them on Gurgon before eventually causing Chronic's ship to crash land there too. And in case you couldn't tell from the clips that I'm showing, all of the dinosaur content featured in this movie are just reused shots from 1977's Planet of Dinosaurs, whose special effects work was done by Steven Zirkus, James Opperly, and Douglas Beswick. How they got away with reusing this footage is beyond me. It's Alive after a newlywed couple's car breaks down in the middle of nowhere, they find temporary shelter at a farm ran by a weird old man. Turns out this weird old man has a pet humanoid dinosaur thing that he keeps hidden away within a cavern that he feeds live victims to. I don't know if this creature is actually supposed to be a dinosaur, but a lot of the descriptions online call it that. So I'm assuming the creation of this movie's monster came down to the minuscule budget they were likely working with. They probably just couldn't afford to make it look like an actual dinosaur, and resorted to a downgraded swamp monster kind of look. Chicken Park Okay, so if you want to be technical, because birds are dinosaurs, this movie does count as a dinosaur movie. I'm only saying this because after watching the movie myself, I can confirm that this isn't an actual dinosaur movie. And when I when I say that, I mean like there isn't a non-avian or a non-modern dinosaur in it. It's just chickens. Anyways, Chicken Park is a very weird Italian Jurassic Park parody that was released in 1994. The movie is about an Italian chicken breeder who moves to the Dominican Republic after his initial business gets sabotaged. Hoping to make enough money with his last rooster and restart his business, things go wrong after his chicken is kidnapped and taken to a facility called Chicken Park that houses giant monstrous chickens. So now the chicken breeder has to go on this wacky weird adventure to go looking for his rooster. According to the Chicken Park movie lore, a hundred million years ago, well before the dinosaurs, their words not mine, their roamed enormous sex-crazed chickens. I'm not joking, they say this in the movie. In case you couldn't tell, the movie is very much a comedy, with airplane levels of ridiculous slapstick humor. Jurassic Trash 
Jurassic Trash, also known as Terror of Prehistoric Bloody Monster from Space, is a French Jurassic Park parody film about a mad scientist who discovers dinosaur eggs that he decides to experiment with. As a result, he creates dinosaur-human hybrids that end up escaping from his lab and wreaking havoc towards the local population. The movie comes complete with really bad practical effects and half-naked women. Jurassic Vengeance also known as Revenge of the Lost, Jurassic Vengeance is a little-known B-movie that's centered around a dinosaur apocalypse. After a breakout of loose dinosaurs overrun the modern world, a trio of survivors attempt to make their way through the carnage to get to a military base. However, when they eventually reach the military base, they make an even more horrifying discovery. What they end up discovering, I don't fucking know because I didn't watch the movie. This is j I'm just getting this from synopsis that I read online uh, from a few different places and that's what it says, so yeah. Dinosaur Activity Dinosaur Activity is a found footage film about a group of friends going on a cabin trip in the woods, where they encounter strange lizard-like dinosaurs. This is another Mark Polonia produced film and was actually one of the last movies that his twin brother John Polonia would be a part of before his death in the same year. The movie itself is not very good, with the found footage style feeling more like a way to make an even lazier film than the typical Polonia production, and of course, the dinosaurs don't look that great either, since at first glance, they look more like lizards than actual dinosaurs. Though, looking at the creature more, I'm starting to think it's not either of these things. At least, maybe that wasn't the initial intention. The film has a weird emphasis on fire throughout, which makes me think it's trying to allude that these creatures are supposed to be dragons, rather than dinosaurs. It's hard to say though, but it's possible for this to be the case especially when you consider this movie was not always called Dinosaur Activity. Before, it had a much more general name which was simply Monster Movie and at a different point American Monster, but I figured I'd include it anyways just to be safe. Gondrosaurus Rex Back in the 80s, American laws were becoming more and more strict against the use of drugs, largely due to Ronald Reagan's election for presidency in 1981, who launched an anti-drug campaign and this caused many hippies and stoners to become very anti-Reagan, leading to the creation of movies like Gonjasaurus Rex, which is about a band of hippies who have the last seeds of a very rare strand of marijuana, Cannabis Sequoia. While doing this, they not only tried to dodge the feds, but also a gigantic 400 foot tall dinosaur called Gondosaurus rex, named after the weed induced plants it naturally consumes. It expresses its message through the perspective of the hippies, who mean well and are actually pretty enjoyable to watch, along with also splicing actual mid 80s footage of federal agents raiding and confiscating weed plants grown on people's property in mass. Sure, it might come off as pretty one sided, but overall, it's a dumb little enjoyable enjoyable film. The Dinosaur Chronicles I talked about the Dinosaur Chronicles in a very brief segment of my Saurians video because it's another Polonia Brothers production. There wasn't a whole lot of information about it on the internet, but I was able to locate a version of it that was released through a DVD box called Galaxy of Terror with three other Polonia Brothers produced movies, and I was able to watch the movie myself. It's not good at all. It's to be expected that anything the Polonia Brothers make is going to be ultra low budget, and it's no different with the Dinosaur Chronicles. What's interesting about this movie is that it's actually split into two stories. The first story, called Prehistoric Island, is about a trio of friends who go on a yacht trip after one of them strikes it rich after winning a cash prize sweepstake contest. After a bad storm out at sea, the trio get stranded on a dinosaur inhabited island, which are brought to life with a mix of all sorts of practical effects that vary in quality. Some of them are really badly produced puppets and others are more competently put together. Some of these better puppets were actually made by Brett Piper, and if I'm correct, some of these models were also used in Piper's 1996 Dinosaur Babes movie. This first story makes up the bulk of the movie, about 47 minutes out of the 68 minute total runtime. The rest of the 20 minutes are given to the next part of the film titled Dawn of the Dinosaur. This one takes place in the distant future of 2000 
2007, where the fallout of World War III leaves society decimated, turning humans into mutants, and resurrecting the dinosaurs in the process. This whole story is literally just filler. Nothing eventful happens, mainly just a lot of slow walking through a building with our two main characters, before they're chased down a hall by a Triceratops hand puppet that one of them is killed by. The other continues and finds a computer room being ran by a masked man that turns out to be a mutant creature thing, and then the movie ends. I'm not joking, that's pretty much it. Well, that was the second version of the dinosaur movie Iceberg. I've been kind of on and off with this one, but I really wanted to revisit it since I've been meaning to do it for a while now. If there's any dinosaur movies that I missed on this list, let me know in the comments down below. I honestly had fun putting this list and video together, so I'm not at all against the idea of making a third video on the iceberg, given there's enough entries to do so, that is. I also plan to watch some of these movies for my Patreon commentary series, so if you want to check out my reaction to some of these, check out my Patreon page. It's only $3 a month to gain access to this series. Speaking of Patreon, huge thanks to all of my Patreon members including Blindberg, Eric, Julian, Galactic Breaker, PD19, Studio DM Wing, Darwinius, Ghost Medic, Gambit, Greasy Pulsating Frog, and Inquisitor Zarius. Thank you guys for your support, I appreciate all of you. Anyways, that's all I have to say for now, thank you so much for watching, and please, have a nice day.